And when you look at the fact that Ezekiel Elliott's status has been a question mark all season long, one would think that this team would have been prepared to be a football team without one player. But that doesn't appear to be the case because we all know that Jason Garrett is the head coach for the Dallas Cowboys because he's essentially the adopted son of Jerry Jones. They just forgot. They just haven't told the rest of the world that they adopted this man a long time ago. What it comes down to is very, very clear. You look at this defense right now. You give up 434 yards passing to Phillip Rivers. You give up over 500 yards in total offense to the San Diego Chargers. The first time they've done that in ages. You combine that with the fact that at least seven receptions for for more than 22 yards. That's not about Dak Prescott. Certainly, if Ezekiel Elliott was on the field, you disguise it, and as a result, the defense doesn't get exposed. But the reality is, is that it still call, it still falls on the shoulder of Jason Garrett. Just devoid of leadership. This team doesn't even look like a team without one running back. That's just senseless. I don't want to hear that. You've got a quarterback. You've got a massive offensive line, even though Zach, Zach Martin went out with a concussion in the second quarter. You still got Tyron Smith back. You're still looking at a formidable offensive line. Last time I checked, Des Bryant, Terrence William, Cole Beasley, Jason Witten were all playing. Uh, you look at it from that perspective, along with Dak Prescott being there instead of Tony Romo, there is no excuse for this team to look this bad collectively just because Ezekiel Elliott is gone. That falls on Jason Garrett um, and, and, and Rod Marinelli to a lesser degree. Uh, it falls on those guys as a coaching staff as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to blame just the players for this one. They're not completely absolved, but they're certainly not primarily culpable. This is about the leaderless Dallas Cowboys who really don't have a head coach as far as I'm concerned. They really have Jerry Jones, and then it's from Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones to the players. Of the choices, Molly, mm -hmm. you know, Dak, Ezekiel Elliott, or Jason Garrett, I would also have to go with Jason Garrett because, very specifically, the defense quit. Stephen A., you brought up Marinelli, and everyone loves him and everything, but Marinelli is the defensive coordinator, and the defense quit. I didn't even see it as a problem with the offense. Obviously, the offense wasn't good. Obviously. But, but I didn't see the offense quitting. In fact, one of the reasons Dak threw all those interceptions was because, by the way, like Eli Manning, who everyone gets on for interceptions, he's not worried about his stats. You know, late in the game, you're down, you're probably going to lose anyway. Take a shot. Forget, okay, so he's throwing an interception. What difference does it make? You're going to lose anyway. He took some shots that were ill-advised, but it was because he was trying to make it happen in a lost cause. I, I'm not even worried about that. That's not quitting on Dak's part. But the defense quit. And that's on the coaching staff. They, they didn't want to tackle anyone. I was telling you guys this last week when Ajayi said that he thought they quit. The running back would know the defense didn't want to tackle. But I don't think those, that the choices should be limited to the three that you presented, Molly, because the real answer, as I also tried to tell you earlier in this week, is Stephen Jones. That's who is to blame. He gets credit for making his dad draft Zach Martin instead of Johnny Manziel, right? He gets credit for spending draft after draft with their first pick, putting together a great offensive line. But then as the head of player personnel, you also have to manage that line, make sure that you plug it in. If guys retire, sign with other teams, get hurt, they haven't done a great job with that this year. This year, he may, that may resolve itself going forward. And more significantly, why does the defense quit? They don't have a lot of playmakers because until 2017 draft, they weren't spending their top picks on defensive players. Taco Charlton has, is off to a slow start. We'll see what happens. It's the first time they drafted with their first pick a defensive player in how long? And, and, you know, and, and that was the 28th pick in the draft because they were so good the previous season. So that's on player personnel guy. That's on Stephen Jones. He's been getting his way with Jerry. He's been getting to choose his guys. And right now, because they haven't spent resources in terms of draft picks or treasure on top defensive players until very recently, the defense is no good. And then when Sean Lee gets hurt, of course, it all falls to pieces. But the number one person to blame is the same guy who I gave credit, who's Stephen Jones. That's the product on the team. They don't have a defense. Well, listen, you can say they don't have a defense, but ultimately, again, when we watch the team, Jason Garrett is supposed to be able to do something to at least, uh, uh, not, if not stop the bleeding, slow it down. And the fact that he's not doing that, what the hell do you need him for? We could talk about Stephen Jones, but in the end, when we look at the Dallas Cowboys collectively as a team, personnel-wise, we don't see a team that's devoid of the kind of personnel 
that justifies the butt whipping that they took yesterday. We don't see a team that you look at and say, okay, they have Ezekiel Elliott, so they have absolutely no chance of winning games. We don't see a team that makes us say you're going to surrender over 500 yards in total offense and surrender 434 yards to, uh, to, 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 to Phillip Rivers or have Keenan Allen looking like the second coming of Jerry Rice. We don't see that. We don't see greatness uh, on the defensive side of the ball. Don't get me wrong, but we don't see it to that degree. One of the things that we have to do to measure the quality of coaching in the National Football League is you look at personnel, and you look at what the expectation should be, and then you wonder what kind of impact a coach could have. There are plenty of instances, for example, Max, where there are coaches who lose games, but a team fought valiantly. They were far more competitive than anticipated. They maxed out the potential that they had. That's how we gauge and judge the need for a particular coach, because when a coach is able to do that with guys, it tells you something about him. The fact that one guy, as great as Ezekiel Elliott is, I understand the losses, and we anticipated that losses would come. What we didn't anticipate was that the Dallas Cowboys would look this bad without them. Well, look, the Dallas Cowboys are really a soap opera. I mean, that's really what makes them interesting. It's not, Lord knows, not winning playoff games, Stephen A., as you point out, in almost a quarter of a century, two playoff wins. But they are an in, they're interesting because they're a soap opera. So when I brought up Stephen Jones it was earlier this week, or maybe it was last week, you said, Max, that's really Jerry. That comes back to Jerry. Well, if you want to use your own logic, it's not even Jason Garrett. It comes back to Jerry in this whole soap opera, Stephen A., because why is Jason Garrett there? Because Jerry Jones likes sycophants. He does not want Jimmy Johnson there who gets so much glory and who's going to push back against him. He wants someone who will kiss up and give him the credit. Mm -hmm. And if that's Jerry Jones's personality, which it is, that's the kind of head coach you're going to get, a Jason Garrett Which is head coach. why. I, I don't think Jason we, Garrett's as bad as you think he is, but certainly he's not like, he's not a world beater, right? And that's why Jerry Jones wants well, him there. It's well, the Jerry Jones show. Well, number one, that's why it's not Stephen Jones. It's Jerry Jones, because as I told you yesterday, it's his show, not his son's. His son has to convince the owner, but ultimately it comes down to the owner. But number two, and more importantly, we can sit up there and try to give Jason Garrett a pass. We are allowed to look at him, you know, his collective resume. We got to think about the guy that went back to back to back, eight and eight seasons. We're literally entering the final week of the regular season. The Dallas Cowboys had an opportunity to win the NFC East division and lost all three times to all three different teams, the Redskins, the Giants, the Eagles, in back-to-back-to-back -back 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 years. So when I look at it from that perspective, I'm saying most coaches in that situation would have been done. But he got the chance to but come back. Ultimately, they is, had a 12-4 right. season. All right? That's what I'm that's saying? Right, that's right. But my point is, you're, you're on Jason Garrett. You're right. You're not wrong about that. My larger point is, you know who's going to replace Jason Garrett? It's going to be another Jason Garrett, and you're going to mm -hmm. have the same issues with him. This guy just happens to be called Jason Garrett. The next guy whoa. will be the same whoa, thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It won't be Jimmy whoa, whoa, Johnson whoa, 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 or Bill Parcells. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It won't be a guy whoa, whoa. like that. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, just because it's going to be another Jason Garrett, I, I surmise by that you mean a basic puppet for Jerry Jones, somebody that, right. that Jerry Jones likes and is comfortable with. That doesn't mean that they won't be more efficient than Jason Garrett. They might have the same Maybe relationship marginally. or similar relationship. But the point is, is that another Jason Garrett, you're talking about personality and how somebody may successfully go about the business of ingratiating themselves with Jerry Jones. I'm talking about his production. And again, if Jason Garrett, you know, you got people out there that are fans of Jason Garrett. I am not sit, sit, sitting here saying that Jason Garrett, quote unquote, can or cannot coach. What I am saying is we have a license to look at his resume, look at what level of production or lack thereof no he has put forth, and then ask one question. How many coaches would keep their job for this long if they were in his position. Most would no be No doubt. My point is, that Stephen is the A., point. the coaches that succeed, the coaches that you like, that I like, that everyone likes, the best coaches, what kind of personalities do they have? Is Mike Tomlin a puppet for anyone? Is Bill Belichick a puppet for anyone? Is, Steve, is, is Pete Carroll a puppet for anyone? Mm -hmm. No, the best coaches don't have that personality. And with Jerry Jones, this is, you know, not this accurate. is nothing new. Jimmy Johnson got run out of town. Bill Parcells got run out of town. You will not get the kind of coach you want in Dallas because Jerry's ego can't handle it. Yeah, what's also well, alarming to me with this team, though, is that uh, Dak was sacked 14 times, guys, the last three games. Let's stay with this soap opera theme and focus on the protagonist here. So after the game, guess where Big Jer was in front of the mic? Jerry, your thoughts.
We're not playing good. We're not, we're not a good team right now. Uh, 